In this video, I'm going to talk about memory leaks on Android. And before I get started with the specifics of what I'm going to be talking about, I just want to mention that if you don't know what memory leaks are or you're kind of unsure about them, you don't know a lot about them, this video is going to be very, very valuable because chances are if you don't know about them, you don't know a lot about them, you're probably going to have a lot of them in your code. Specifically speaking, in this video, I'm going to be talking about what exactly memory leaks are, uh, why you want to avoid memory leaks, the most common ways that memory leaks can occur, coding patterns that typically lead to memory leaks. I think that was four things, four or five. And then I'm going to finish up by showing you some practical examples of causing memory leaks uh, and then how to identify memory leaks so that you can then go into your code and figure out what's wrong and fix them. So the first question is, what exactly is a memory leak? And to understand memory leaks, first of all, you need to understand memory and how it's managed on Android. So the Android device has a fixed amount of memory. It's no different than your computer or any other tech device. There's always going to be some amount of memory that that device has and can use at any given time. Things that use up memory are objects, threads, or any process that the Android device is going to do. That means like starting a new application, um, declaring new objects, instantiating objects, all that, all that stuff requires memory and there is a fixed amount of it. This fixed amount of memory is known as the heap. H-E-A-P, it's spelled heap. And the heap on an Android device basically denotes the amount of free memory at any given time. So I like to think of it as a pile of, um, a pile of memory blocks, for example. Every time something is done that requires memory, a block or a memory block is removed from the pile, otherwise known as the heap, and that is then being used for something. So if I was to instantiate an object, I would take a memory block away from the heap, and then that memory block is then used for that object. To prevent the Android system from getting overwhelmed when it's under heavy load or when a lot of memory is being used, or in other words, when the heap is low, when it's low on memory, there's something called the garbage collector. The Android system has something called a garbage collector. And it's the garbage collector's job to basically go around the device. It can access any application, any process, and to look at it and see which objects, which processes, which threads are no longer needed. And then it wants to, and then it will take the resources that those things are occupying and, it, and return it to the heap. So it's essentially, it goes around and it collects memory blocks that are no longer being used and then puts it back into the free resources pile. That's how I like to think of it anyway. And the garbage collector operates completely independently of everything else. It's part of the Android system. It has a built-in algorithm that uh, the, the people who designed the Android system have programmed and it's designed to go off. It has an algorithm built in. It goes off and does its own thing basically. This isn't something that the developer, that you as the developer can control, um, not directly anyway. It kind of goes off and does its own thing and frees up resources that it it uh, thinks need to be reclaimed. So now I'm sure you're wondering, how does this garbage collector thing relate to memory leaks? And it's actually pretty much directly related to memory leaks because uh, a memory leak is defined as when the garbage collector is unable to reclaim a resource and return it to the heap. So if uh, an object is instantiated, a memory block is taken from the heap, and for whatever reason, that garbage collector is not able to then reclaim that block of memory and return it to the pile, that's when you get a memory leak. So now that you know what a memory leak is, or kind of what a memory leak is, let's talk about the most common ways that these can occur. How does this, ha how does this happen? How is uh, a built-in function, known as the garbage collector, unable to essentially perform its job? So there's several ways that you can get memory leaks, but some of the most common ways are due to a view, a context, or an activity reference saved on a background thread. So the reason that causes a memory leak is in an example for in the example of an async task, for example, if I was to save a context reference to um, to the async task, to some custom async task, and then I was to use that context reference to instantiate an object, maybe like a bitmap or something like that, which is what we're going to do in the example in a, in a couple minutes here, um, that will essentially keep a reference to the context in the background thread, 
and then if that activity is destroyed, that async task is still running in the background. So what happens if the activity is destroyed? The garbage collector goes up to clean up the activity, but it, it, re it sees that there is a reference saved to that activity in some of the thread. So it's unable to clean it up because it sees that there's a reference pointing to it from some other thread. And that's, that's kind of the most common way that a memory leak can occur. So in general, before we look at the example here, just if you don't want to watch this video anymore and you're getting bored, in general, to avoid memory leaks, you'll probably like avoid 99.9% .9 of memory leaks that you could ever uh, have happen to your code. Don't save context or activities or views on background threads and you'll probably be good. But um, if you wanna learn more, we're gonna take a look at an example here that I've prepared and uh, look at kind of this in more detail. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing in this short demo is I'm gonna take you through a couple examples of things that are going to cause memory leaks and then I'm gonna show you how you might detect them, go about detecting them. So to get started, we need a way to detect memory leaks. And um, I think the best way that I've seen out there is to use an open source library known as Leak Canary. It's very easy to set up, it's very easy to use, and it works really, really well. It's made by the company known as Square, which is a very well-renowned company. So let's go down here, and I'm at the GitHub page for Leak Canary. If you want to get to it, you can always just Google Leak Canary, and I'm sure it'll be like the first one that comes up right there. Um, so just scrolling down on their GitHub page here, and I'm going to the Getting Started Guide, and I'm going to grab these two dependencies. This is for using support library fragments, which we're not going to, so we're just going to grab these two. And I'm going to open up Android Studio, and I'm going to paste that in down here and sync the project. Now if I go back to the GitHub page, I have a couple more steps here. The first is to, actually this is the last step, is to create a class that extends application. And then all I gotta do is put this little bit of code in there and everything will just work. It's, it's really that straightforward. All I need is to get the dependencies, create this class, and then when the app starts, it's just going to work, which is a really a beautiful thing. So I'm gonna go into the main package directory. I'm gonna right click, go to new Java class. I'm just gonna call this my application and I'm going to extend my application like it says on the GitHub page. It's giving me a warning here, which uh, is telling me I need to add this to the manifest. So I'm gonna go to the manifest, I'm gonna add a name attribute to the application and reference that new class that I just made. So that's added, now I just wanna paste in that uh, onCreate method that's from the GitHub page and I'm ready to go. Now when I run the app, Leak Canary will automatically start and it's going to detect memory leaks if one occurs in the app. So as you can see, it's very, very easy to set up and you're gonna see it's really, really powerful and easy to use too in just a few minutes here. Okay, so we're done in the application class, we're done in the build.gradle. Now I wanna talk about the app that we're going to be working on. So it's very simple, I just have uh, one activity. It's got a button with an ID go on it, which is gonna start the async task that we're gonna to add to the activity. So pretty simple, uh, going into main activity. Uh, there's nothing here yet. So all I did so far was attach an on-click listener to the go button, and then there's gonna be some code in here that we're gonna execute. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna be building an async task to cause these memory leaks. So I'm gonna create a private class. I'm gonna call it my async task, extend by async task, and they're all gonna be void. This is just kind of a, a dummy class where I'm forcing a memory leak. Um, it's giving me a warning, so I'm gonna go alt enter, implement the do in background method. And I'm also going to insert the default constructor. So I'm pressing Alt Insert, getting that default constructor. And there is our async task. I'm gonna declare it as a global object. So my async task, and I'll just call it my async task. And then inside the on click method, I'm going to start that async task. But uh, before I do that, we need to alter it just a little bit here. So if you were watching, if you're paying attention to the beginning part of this video, you know that saving a reference to a view, an activity, or a context into something that runs on a background thread is a big no-no. That's what's probably going to lead to you having memory leaks. So what I'm going to do is just that. I'm gonna do the thing that I told you not to do. So I'm gonna add a context variable to the async task, and I'm going to pass it through the constructor. So context, context, and I want to go m context equals context. And then inside the do in background method, I'm going to instantiate an object that uses that context. So I'm going to instantiate a bitmap object. So bitmap factory. And I want to decode resource. I'm just going to decode a, um, a drawable. 
So here's where I'm going to reference the context, get resources, and I want to uh, just reference that, and then r.drawable.ic launcher background. So it's just a, a default image that comes in your project, um, just this image right here. It doesn't matter what image you use, just uh, any drawable will be fine. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sleep the thread for a period of time. So sleep, I'll sleep it for 5,000 milliseconds. It's giving me a warning here. I'm just going to press Alt, Enter, surround that in a try catch, and we are ready to go. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the async task, then the bitmap will get instantiated, and before the thread is finished sleeping, so it's going to sleep for five seconds, before it's done finished finish sleeping, I'm going to destroy the activity. And so that is what's going to cause the memory leak. Because as you know, the memory leak will occur, will be triggered, I guess you could call it, when the garbage collector is unable to clean up a resource or something that's been uh, assigned a block of memory. And that can happen when a background thread or when a reference to an activity of you or a context is saved on a background thread. So if I destroy the activity, but the async task still holds a reference to that activity or that context, the garbage collector is not gonna be able to clean up the async task. And um, so that's what we're gonna see here. So inside of the um, go method here, I'm going to instantiate my new async task. So new my async task. It's going to take a context, so main activity dot this. And then I want to call my async task dot execute, and that's going to execute the async task. Uh, so that's gonna start it. Now I need a way to destroy the activity. So what I'm gonna do is right here, write a little if statement saying if my async task does uh, does not equal null, meaning it's already started, because the first time I click it, it's going to assign the async task and execute it. But when I click the go button a second time, this will no longer be null. So this if statement will run. And what I want to do is I want to finish the activity. So that's going to result in the activity being destroyed. And you can confirm that by inserting the on destroy method. And I can just write a little log that says uh, activity is destroyed. So I need a tag too. Just typing log t for the tag. And there we go. So yeah, now I'm going to run it and we'll take a look. So while it's, while it's getting ready to run, I'm just gonna kind of summarize once again what's gonna happen. I'm gonna click the go button. This if statement will not run because the async task will be null. So the async task will get instantiated. It will execute. Uh, the bitmap will get instantiated inside the do and background method. The thread will go to sleep for five seconds. Before that five seconds is up, I'm going to press the go button again, which will result in the activity being destroyed. So at that point, what we're gonna have is a context saved on a background thread uh, in this bitmap object, and the activity is being destroyed. So we should see a memory leak. All right, so I have the app open here. I'm gonna press go, and I've waited about a couple seconds. Now I'm gonna press go again. You can see the activity is destroyed. And now in a few seconds, you should see a little notification up here from leak canary. There it is right there. And if I pull that down, it's saying dumping heap, analyzing heap dump and what's going to happen is it's going to give me some information about what's happened here. Basically, if you get a notification, it means you have a memory leak. If you don't get any notification, you mean it means that you have no memory leaks. So you can see that I'm, I have a leak here. I can get some information on it. It's saying that um, I have some thread. The my async task object is referencing a context and there's an issue here. So it's, tell, it's pointing here and saying that this is the issue. There's some kind of an issue here. Basically, go fix it. You can see the red underline, the red underline. That's that's how leak canary works. So if I was to remove this, for example, actually, I guess we can just, um, now I'm just going to go through uh, how I would, the different ways I would resolve this memory leak. So the first way is actually what I can do in the on destroy method. Before super.onDestroy is called, I can go myAsyncTask.cancel and set this to true. So what that's going to do is it's going to interrupt the background running task and stop it and shut it down, basically. So because the issue here is that this async task exists and it holds a reference to the activity. The activity gets destroyed, but the async task just still exists and holds that reference. The reason it still exists is because this do in background method is running. So what we can do is we can cancel it and interrupt it if it's running and then destroy the activity and everything should be fine. So I'll run that and I'll show you that there will be no more memory leak. All right, I'm gonna press go. That's a couple seconds, now I'm gonna press go again. The activity is shut down. Now I'm just waiting to see if I can 
get a notification from Leak Canary and nothing is showing up as you can see. It would have shown up by now. So that solves our problem. That's one way to solve the problem. Although I still wouldn't recommend saving, uh, that's kind of like a workaround, I guess. I still, I wouldn't recommend saving a context in general on a background thread. Um, but if you do, just make sure that you clean up your resources before the activity is destroyed so that the garbage collector can do its thing. So the next method that we're gonna look at is using something known as a weak reference. And if you use, so if you use a weak reference, a uh, weak reference object, actually I'm just gonna write it out and then we'll talk about it here. So weak reference context, I'll call it, I'll still just call it m context. I'll comment this out. I go m context equals new weak reference and I wanna pass the context. And then inside here, instead of writing this, I'm just gonna duplicate that line. In case you don't know what shortcut I just used to copy that line, I just press Control D. And so now I'm gonna go context dot get. And what that's gonna do is this is actually a weak reference object and I can reference the type by calling dot get. So you can see that returns a context object and um, that should be fine. So that, and I can comment this out too so you can see that the weak reference is taking care of that issue. But before I run it, I just gotta do one last thing. I need to declare the async task as static. I need to declare it as static because this is currently an inner class that's defined inside of main activity. Because this async task is an inner class inside main activity, it has an implicit reference to that activity. So by declaring it as static, I get rid of that implicit reference. Um, so yeah, that should take care of it. We have our weak reference in here. Uh, we're using that to build our bitmap and it should be good to go. Got our cancel method commented out. Now I'm gonna run it and I'll show you that there should be no memory leak. All right, I'm going to press go and then press go again. Oh, I think I just pressed it the first time, now press it the second time, there we go. And let's wait to see if we get a notification from leak canary. And it seems to be all good. So, so far nothing. I'll just give it a couple more seconds. That looks good to go. So the weak reference, took care of that memory leak issue. Another thing to note about this static declaration is watch what happens when I actually add this context to here. So I'll, I'll comment this one out, comment that out, comment that out, comment that out, and turn this all back. It's giving me a warning here. It says this field leaks a context object. If I delete the static reference, it gets rid of that warning, but then I get another warning up here. So either way, you're gonna get a warning. If you use static, it basically tells you that this is potentially gonna cause a memory leak and then you need to look at this. So uh, a good rule of thumb that I like to use is either don't use a context reference inside a background thread at all, ever, which is the best way to do it, or declare it as static because that way at least you're gonna get a warning from Android Studio and it's gonna tell you, hey, you might wanna look out here, this is probably gonna cause an issue. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful and you have some new insights into memory leaks and how you can prevent them. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in that next video.